everyone, and welcome to Dose of Bliss at Home. Today, we have an exciting episode for you. I have casting producer Jazzy Collins here today. She is a former casting producer of The Bachelor and recently went viral for talking about their diversity issues and working there. So I'm really excited to have you here today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Today, what we're going to talk about is what it's like to work at a business, wanting to speak up about something and having people kind of push back on that and having the courage to stand up for what you believe in. You recently went viral for talking about the diversity issues on The Bachelor. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I left The Bachelor about uh, beginning of 2019. And ever since then, I knew I was like, I need to speak out on my experience there. I didn't have the, the greatest experience there due to their diversity issues. Um, but this was like, okay, let's see, you know, how things go. You know, I don't want to be blacklisted in the entertainment industry. So I was afraid. I was terrified to ever say anything about it. And then I noticed the Black Lives Matter movement was, you know, ramping up. I was getting excited about it because I was like, you know, now I could talk about different issues that are not just, you know, what's happening in my day-to-day -day life. It's also happening in the entertainment industry. So I wrote a letter, uh, an open letter to ABC, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, all the executive producers, and just basically explaining my experience there, how it was, um, how, you know, I think they need change. And just because you're naming a black bachelor does not mean that you're solving the issue that's happening internally. So I wrote that whole letter, had no idea it was going to go viral or anything like that. I had no idea that anyone was going to pick it up. I was just kind of like speaking my truth and just if people take what it is and they move on with it, that's totally fine. At least I had the opportunity to like speak about it. And, you know, everyone has been blowing up. It's just like mind boggling to me. Um, but since then, a lot of people have been coming forward with me, to me, about their stories about, you know, working in the industry, whether it be casting, production, or even at The Bachelor, that, you know, they also had an experience that wasn't so great because they were the only person of color that was in that okay. office. So can you tell me about what that experience kind of was like when you were speaking up? You kind of talked about there were some microaggressions that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I had a definitely, I was called aggressive anytime um, anyone would, I would speak up um, because I have a voice. I have a very powerful voice when I talk in an office and everyone just assumes that like the way I speak, it just, it sounds aggressive to them, which is a microaggression. You know, there's a huge stereotype that black men and women are aggressive or, you know, when they speak or, or when they act or anything like that. And I, hated that. I absolutely hated that, but I was afraid to speak out at that point, you know? Um, and then anytime I would also, you know, mention a few things that were happening in the office, I would get, you know, brushed over. They would go into different rooms and have the conversations without me if I thought that my opinion, they just thought that my opinion didn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I was like, you know, this is the time that like, we need to start talking about what's actually happening behind closed doors and not just letting it getting pushed under the rug anymore. And what did that feel like? Because you were brought on during, for Rachel Lindsay season to bring more diversity. So here you are coming to a job, thinking mm -hmm. you're going to bring diversity, speaking up about diversity, and then being told you're aggressive, being ignored. What did that feel like? Especially that working for a show as big as The Bachelor, that's a dream career. Yeah, yeah. I had... I would say that during Rachel Lindsay's season, we did actually get that diverse cast. Um, they were all for that, but it was afterwards when it went back to status quo and we were having a lot more of a whitewashed cast, that's when I started noticing all of these little things that are happening behind closed doors. Um, when, I, when I got that, I was so frustrated and I was so upset because I was like, I thought this was almost like a part of my career that I felt like I was going to start taking off. And I also felt like this was going to be a part where, you know, I had a more of a voice um, as a producer and it seemed like the complete opposite. And I would come home like every day to, you know, my husband and I would just be like so frustrated because I didn't know what to do. And, you know, eventually I it did end up finding a voice, but it wasn't until after I left the show when, you know, when you're just constantly pushed down for so many years, it just weighs on you and you get to the point where you just give up. 
Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it anymore. Um, you're, you're tired of being that one person that's constantly talking about it or trying to make the change. And so you just go, you know what, never mind. You know, it's out of my hands. But this is the movement that's happening right now. Black Lives Matter is, is such an important moment in our history. And the fact that all of these people from all walks of life are coming forward and sharing their stories is just so inspirational. Um, and I'm just happy to be a very small piece of that. <laughs> it's amazing that you have the courage because people don't teach you what it's like to be in the entertainment industry or really a job in general when this happens to you. I was lucky enough to have a teacher who told us a story about getting fired for seeing her boss have an affair and she didn't say anything about it and they demoted her and she was so sad and I always held that with me and I've had situations in the industry as well. And I think this is more prevalent to people than people know, but your courage to just, you know, first off, just going into the office every day, knowing this has happened, kind of fighting for something, but fighting past it. That's so much courage. And then courage to leave when you identify with a career, you know, you said it, you thought you were going to take off at this point. Mm -hmm. And when you real, when was that moment that you realized you needed to, to leave and change, make a change for yourself? Um, basically the last season that I was on, um, the last season was, that I worked on was, uh, Hannah's season. Um, and that was the last time we were dealing with, you know, men at that point. Um, and I knew at that moment, I was like, I don't want to cast another slew of women that are just going to all look the same. Um, and you know, I wasn't getting further anywhere in my actual career. I was kind of stagnant at that point. And I was also knowing that my voice wasn't ever being heard. I worked on five seasons and I feel like I never actually got anywhere when it came to like my voice. Um, yes, you know, having The Bachelor on your resume is fantastic. Like no matter what, that's always gonna be something that's great. But uh, just the general me being able to speak on issues or speak on, you know, trying to push diversity in the casting office it wasn't ever being heard. So by that point, I was like, it's time for me to go. Um, you know, I actually had the great opportunity right after that show to work for an Oprah Winfrey Network show. That's where amazing. I had, yeah, and it was the most diverse uh, group of people working on that show. And I was like, what a breath of fresh air to actually be in the same room as someone that looks like you rather than being the outsider. And someone who wants to listen, it just goes to show when you're not afraid to take that next step, a world just manifests and opens for you exactly what you want. And the experience was different. And you could have been scared to leave, but you took that chance mm -hmm. to leave. Absolutely. Different. And so knowing what it was like going somewhere that kind of respected your viewpoint and was more diverse versus somewhere that kind of held you back, you know, what have you learned from that? I learned that you have to speak up. You have, if something all doesn't feel right, you need to do something about it. If you can't just internalize it and hope it goes away, it's never going to go away. If you're going to bed at night and you are looking back on your day and you say, wow, you know, that one thing that, you know, my coworker said really bothers me. You need to go in the next day and have that conversation. I know sometimes going to HR is something that's really terrifying. I never went to HR because I was terrified. Um, you know, I, even talking to just like your boss can be terrifying. And I think people need to start getting into the mindset that like your boss may be your superior, but if they actually respect who you are as a person, because they brought you on, they, they obviously know that you can bring something to the table. They should respect your feelings as well. So, yeah. <laughs> and also what I learned is how you handle it. Because I always talk about with everyone I know, what's the worst that could happen? And we think the worst that can happen is maybe you'll get fired over something like this. And that does sadly happen. But when I've talked to people about experiences I've had and similar to yours, it's the way you handle it. So people will look at you and say, wow, you handled that really professionally. I admire you and I want to work with you because you did that. Because you weren't afraid to walk away from what you believe in. That means you're going to be an amazing person to work with. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. If you, you have to walk away sometimes. If it's not going to be something that is ever going to be fixed internally, you know, with your boss, 
sometimes you got to make that leap. And that leap is terrifying. I remember being like, I was at that show for two and a half years. I, it was a steady payment. Like it's, it's so great, you know, especially for someone that worked in freelance before and now currently having that paycheck and knowing, you know, when you're going to have off is fantastic. It's so great. But if you're not, don't see yourself actually getting better as a person, you don't see yourself progressing professionally, then what's the point? It's exactly. like, you need to just move on and someone else will see who you are as a person, see what you bring to the table and they will help you actually get to the place that you need to be. And then you'll be surrounded by the right people. So what changes need to be made moving forward? Um, just in general for casting, um, I think every single company needs to sit down and have a seminar about um, unconscious bias and anti-racism. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, just don't even realize they have an unconscious bias walking through. That's literally why it's called unconscious bias. You just walk into a room and you don't realize you have this bias against someone. If you have a seminar and you actually sit down for an hour and a half and have this conversation, people can learn, people can talk about it, and then we can move forward from there. Also, they need to have more, you know, diverse crews. They need to have more diverse people on television. And the only way they're going to do that is to start hiring these people of color, you know, that are coming from all different walks of life instead of just hiring your friends. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that, you know, this starts a little bit of a conversation that's happening in the, in the industry. And if it is, I'm great. Like I'm excited to like hopefully move forward. I know I'm starting to see some companies making sure that, you know, they need to have maybe someone that's like a head of diversity mm -hmm. on, um, you know, on their board, but it's just like, it shouldn't even have to be a specific job title, like head of diversity at, you know, Warner <laughs> yeah. Brothers. It should just be, this person's the head of casting. This person is, you know, the VP. Like, why can't we have people of color in these more senior roles? Why do they are, why are they constantly on the bottom or why aren't they hired at all? Mm -hmm, exactly. And, you know, something that I find very interesting about your story and inspiring is when we look back in our life, we realize how everything works out for a reason. And you came to The Bachelor to create more diver diversity. And once you left and spoke up about it, you became that person you wanted to be that changed diversity. So looking back on that, what's something you would tell your younger self? That's a great, great question. <laughs> um, I'm, I, would, I would say be patient. Um, change is not going to happen overnight. Um, you need to just wait it out, but you need to still stay strong. Um, eventually you will be able to speak out on these issues, but it's just going to be in a different manner. You're also going to eventually be able to, um, you know, work with such amazing people that promote diversity, that make you feel comfortable in a room. You just got to wait. And, um, you know, but also don't forget about your roots. Don't forget about, you know, that show that actually helped shape who you are today because I you know if that that didn't happen if I didn't have that experience in an office I wouldn't be able to really call upon something today and become the person that I am today that's a lot stronger than I was you know four or five years ago yeah everything you, the things that we think are breaking us are really the, it sounds cheesy but they're the things that's making us exactly so we only have a few minutes left what's the biggest thing you want everyone watching to know Ooh. Um, I, I'm just hoping for change. Um, I, I'm not even just on the industry standard. I'm really hoping for change with this Black Lives Matter movement. I want people, uh, you know, white, Caucasian, Caucasian, uh, Latinx. I want people, Asians that never really understood the Black Lives Matter movement and the, the story that we're sharing to actually sit down and learn. There's a whole bunch of documentaries that are out right now. Um, I just recently watched 13th by Ava DuVernay. And I think it's a really, really interesting conversation starter. And it's something that we all need to learn. There's a lot of things that are missing in our history books. Um, and um, you know, people of color have been struggling for years. So I'm hoping that, you know, this movement is, is something that we all need to just sit down, digest, talk about. I know the conversations are really uncomfortable, but it's something that we all need to do. And that's the only way as a nation we'll be able to move forward.
Exactly. I think that's the biggest message of all of this. It just goes to show everywhere in life, don't be afraid to speak up for what you believe in. Even if you feel like you're not being heard, keep going, keep talking about it, keep pushing. And finally, someone is going to listen, be the change you want to see in the world. And you are a true example of that. And it truly inspires me to not be afraid to let my voice shine and my light shine. So I want to thank you so much for that. Thank you, Lindsay. I really appreciate you. Yeah. So, well, thank you for being on the show. Can you let everyone know where they can find you? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so my Instagram handle is at Jazzy Nicole Collins. So it's spelled J-A-Z-Z-Y-N-I-C-O-L-E-C-O-L-L-I-N-S. Um, that's the best way to reach me um, is Instagram. <laughs> I'll have it on a lower third and I'll also link it below. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. Thank you, Jazzy, for coming here. And we will see you next time for our next Dose of Bliss. Bye. Bye.